Look, I, I can't understand what you're saying. You need to speak English. <laughs> I've one, I do have a new friend that I made this English guy in my neighborhood. Engl English people think I'm a genius, like no matter what I say, like, I'm gonna go to a store to buy some eggs. Oh, that's brilliant. Wow. <laughs> I'm buying the eggs, I'm not laying them. That would be brilliant. <laughs> This guy, you know, I, I'm, I have to get him acclimated to New York. It's a very, you know, it's confusing. It's a confusing place. And he's, so I've become like his, uh, you know, tour guide and stuff. So he wanted, he had never been on the subway. He wanted to bring his bike on the subway. So he hired me to negotiate the deal, you know. <laughs> so I had to go down there. But before I could say anything, he got into an argument with the subway token booth clerk. Nobody can make themselves understood. It was like a cultural impasse, you know. He said, excuse me, right? Uh, I've, got, I've got this bicycle. I'd like to bring the bicycle on the tube. May I bring the bicycle on the tube? And what you gonna do, you gonna take that car and you gonna slide it <laughs> through the slot. Cheers, Bree. I've got a bicycle. The wheels ching ching. I'd like to bring the bicycle on the tube. <sighs> you gonna take that car and you gonna slide it. <laughs> Through the slot, the line, the line where the money at, just uh. Right, I, I, I think you've had much a like bicycle. I like to bring the bicycle on the tube. Look, I, I can't understand what you're saying. You need to speak English. <laughs> Ain't no tube down there, there's a choo choo train. <laughs> The dude just snapped. He looks at me, he's like, bruv, bruv, how do you New Yorkers understand each other? I was like, Psh, knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, for me, this is a real treat to be here. I get to get out of New York a little bit. You know, uh, we went on a vacation and that didn't go well. You know, I was all excited. My wife surprised me. She's like, we're going to, uh, we're going to Costa Rica, right? I'd never been there. So I'm like, okay, but she didn't tell me we're staying in the jungle. She's like, it's a health resort in the jungle. Cause you know, that's where you go to get healthy is the, the jungle. You know, hey, you're losing weight. You're working out now that tsetse fly bite. You got a little malaria, you know, sweating with 32 ways. So pretty good. One week. <laughs> so I packed nice stuff. I got a little great Gadsby alligator belt. You know, I don't have my, you know, Shawshank redemption outfit on. I'm all getting ready. <laughs> And, we fly, and I'm scared of flying, that's another thing. So we fly the normal plane, but to get there, once you land, you gotta catch one of those little planes, and those are the, those are the scariest. Like the pilot, if you're scared of flying, the, the pilot starts it with the hand, and this pilot had an eye patch, and the other eye was lazy, it was looking where the old eye used to be. I'm like, oh, this, this is not gonna be good. So the plane takes off, the engine doesn't sound good. It sounds like somebody sucked up a penny with a dust buster, like I'm like, we're gonna die. So, and the pilot, he senses I'm scared. It's only us on the plane. So he keeps looking back and winking with the remaining eye. I'm like, make that eye look that way. You know, because every time it opens, it's looking different directions, like lemons, oranges, you know, make it look that way. There could be geese or something. He's like, I, I, you know, and he didn't. <laughs> so then we land, right? Now we got to catch a raft uh, to the jungle. I'm not Huck Finn. I've never been on a raft, you know? So I'm a little apprehensive. So the guide comes over who's taken us and I'm asking him questions, you know, that I think are normal questions. I'm like, you got a, uh, a RAF license? So you went to you know, RAF school or something, a certificate I can see. And the guy's not friendly at all. He says one thing to me. He's like, mm, in the jungle, mm, there is no law. Right? He was <laughs> <laughs> kind of passive aggressive, right? Kind of passive aggressive. So I'm on a raft, we're going down the river, I'm marinating on this statement, you know, and I look on one side and there's trees, and another side there's tree that has fallen, all of a sudden it sprouts eyes and legs and starts following us. I'm like, oh, that's a crocodile. You know, I better tell the guide. I'm like, uh, there's a crocodile back there. He's like, it's time. I'm like, it's time for what? It's time to paddle. I'm like, you got the only paddle. What do I use? The hand. I'm not putting the hand in the water. I saw that movie with J-Lo and Ice Cube and stuff jumps out of the water. All I could think is a crocodile saw the belt and wanted revenge. You know, you kill my cousin. <laughs> so, we make it to the land. And uh, we're staying in huts. And uh, <laughs> again, there's no Costa Ricans there. There's no Americans. There's only Germans. Uh, I don't understand. If you ever go to a hot place, there's always Germans there. All, you know, it's a very painful sounding language. And, 
Uh, they're, they're always sunburnt red and they have the little tiny bathing suits that leave nothing to the imagination, you know? <laughs> the little hammocks uh, with the whole fruit bowls in there. And, <laughs> and I think that's how that language got invented. You know, thousands of years ago, German went to a hot place, got all sunburned, like, ooh, ah, eh, ah, my butt on fire. This is how we talk from now on, get down. <laughs> So uh, I start unloading my stuff. The guy comes over, he's like, don't leave the clothes out because in the night, the howling monkey come and he's taking the clothes. He run it. I said, the what? The howling monkey come, he's taking the clothes. He run it. I'm like, I live in Brooklyn. I'm not worried about the howler monkey. Like the other night, uh, a rat ran over my foot. I was wearing flip-flops and it tickled. <laughs> So I go to sleep, I wake up the next day, all my stuff is gone. I look up in the tree, there's a howler monkey up there. And he's got my shirt on, he's got the collar popped all 80s, it's an 80s howler monkey. <laughs> I know he's still holding stuff where the sleeves are rolled up. <laughs> so now my wife wants to go on a hike in the jungle, right? So it's just myself, her, and the guide. And it's funny situations, I don't know if you guys have ever been in this situation where you're out of your element and the person in charge takes, takes liberties, takes control. You know, like this guy, uh, he's kind of hitting on my wife in front of me. You know, showing her the features of the jungle in great detail. My turn, he loses enthusiasm. He has a machete. It's a really awkward <laughs> situation, you know. He'll be like, Lulu, break the leaf and chew that one. That's it like the toothpaste for the nature, for the lady. I'm like, what's that? Leaf, you know. <laughs> you, you don't see leaf before? Look, look, that one, that's the Jesus Christ lizard because he run on top of the water like Jesus. I'm like, what's that? I'm like, look at the leaf. He walked too slow, under it. <laughs> and then he starts trying to scare me. He's like, shh, what's that sound? I'm like, what sound? He's like, the chancho. The chancho is coming. What's the chancho? <laughs> what's the chancho? The chancho is a big pig with a tusk. He smells the gringo. He know they have the money. This make him very angry. <laughs> Like, how do you get away from the chancho? You climb the tree, but the chancho know you in the tree. He pee pee around the base of the tree. The chancho pee pee special come out like a concentrate. You breathe the air, you feel woozy, you fall out of the tree, the chancho by your head, you die! So now, I'm terrified that this pig with a raging urinary tract infection and a working degree of economics is gonna come running out of the jungle. Three hours later, no chancho, and now this guy wants a tip. And all of a sudden, his English gets really good. He's like, I don't know if you saw, but there's a 20% gratuity at the bottom of that contract. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him, I was like, in the jungle, there is no law. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, I know you guys are looking at me like, this dude's not going to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's going to give a lecture about considering a career in law enforcement. <laughs> Yeah, people don't think I'm gonna be funny, you know. They ask me for directions a lot. That happens a lot. That happened just outside the hotel. You know, I don't know where anything is. This lady comes up, where's the post office? Where's the post office? You wanna tell them something? So I was like, uh, you go straight, make a right, then another right, then another right. When you get back here, ask somebody who knows. <laughs> uh, good to be here in Indiana Jones's living room. Uh, <laughs> I'm a comedian, my wife is a psychologist, so she uh, <laughs> fixes people's problems all day. I make fun of them all night, that's kind of how that works. <laughs> we live in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York, it's, uh, it's kind of fancy now. It's like dogs with Uggs and stuff, and you know. But I did hear this argument out the window the other day. One guy shouts at another guy, you know what the real N word is? Psh, knowledge. <laughs> you see stuff in Brooklyn you don't see anywhere else. I was walking through the park the other day, I see this old man doing Tai Chi. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Then I look closer, it's not an old man doing Tai Chi. It's one of those heroin guys that never falls over. <laughs> I think that's who designed the set. I think that's who designed the set. <laughs> I didn't grow up in Brooklyn. I grew up in Washington, D.C. 
I went to, uh, yeah, I went to DC public schools, the only school system with white history month. Uh, <laughs> I was the only white kid in my class with a school play. I was the snowstorm. I just ran across stage naked. <laughs> Then I moved to New York, I moved to Brooklyn, and uh, the, my, my neighborhood was hostile when I moved there. Like the first, this 30 years ago, the first day I'm there, I get in a confrontation, you know, with this guy. You know, I ought to, I ought to bust your face. I ought to bust your face. You stand on my block, you don't show no respect, you look in my eye, I ought to bust your face. I was like, look, officer, I'm just trying to, uh, <laughs> trying to acclimate myself. So I'm a Jewish comedian married to a black woman with a PhD who looks like an Indian. We live in an Italian name in Brooklyn. Everybody thinks I'm Puerto Rican, you know. <laughs> so Puerto Ricans think I'm a cop. Uh, <laughs> I play a lot of cops in, in, in shows and stuff like that, but I, most of the time I play bad guys. Like, uh, it was a while ago I had an audition for a show called S Swift Justice which you can tell by the name, is gonna be a really bad show, you know? <laughs> and I always play like Flacco the drug dealer, and I have one line, and the line is, I'm gonna cut you good, you know? So I'm practicing in the apartment, I'm doing it to the cat, you know, I'm gonna cut you good, you know? Do it to my wife, I'm gonna cut you good. She's like, take out the trash, I'm like, mm, you know? <laughs> so I memorize the line, so I, I go to the audition, the next day there's 30 guys look just like me sitting there, we're gonna cut you good, you know, I'm nervous. Cast director comes out, he messes up my name, DC Benny. He's like, uh, JC Penny? Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I walk in, I'm so nervous, I forget the line. So I improvise something. I'm like, I'll kill all you fools. And I just leave, right? <laughs> and I get the part. I get the part. So, <laughs> so I get the part. I'm very excited, you know, practicing. We, the day we shoot it, we shoot it. Everything's great. And then uh, the night it comes on, I tell everybody, my whole family was sitting there watching the part comes. I'm nowhere to be found. I'm like, well, what happened? My wife's like, they got you good. They got you good. Uh, my wife has an uncle uh, named Willie, and he's one of those dudes that uh, is obsessed with racism. You know, he's, uh, he's always telling me all these different theories he has. Like, to everybody came from the black man. The reason nobody knows about it is because the FBI has suppressed this evidence. He's like, look here, what's FBI stand for? False black information. <laughs> Frogging up a brother's identity. What's the CIA? Caucasians invent alibis. <laughs> Everybody black. Jewish people came from the black man. What did Jewish people say? Oi, what's oi backwards? Yo, same thing, same thing. <laughs> Italians are black. Sicily, named after who? Sicily Tyson. Italy is in the shape of a boot because a brother when Timberlands discovered it. <laughs> Even Scottish people are black. Where them skirts called kilts. Why you stick your hand under there? You're gonna get killed. <laughs> I'm like, who is white then? Anybody named Bob. <laughs> Bob is a secret CIA cohort for back of the bus. That's why you don't never see a brother named Bob. No, a brother's gonna be called Rob because when he can't find no job, he robbed Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the neighborhood I live in, I just got out of a seven year vendetta with a neighbor over a, over a parking space. Uh, I live in this old school Italian neighborhood, right? And there's this one guy there, this violent old man. You know, he's got a, he's got a tomato plant in front of the house. He keeps a lead pipe in it. <laughs> you know, it's not in plumbing, just to threaten people with it. Right? He, he, he's got, he takes up four parking spaces. He's got three cars, he puts cones in between. Takes up four spaces, which is incredibly, there's no parking there at all. It's just so annoying. So I'm a Scorpio, I'm a little vindictive. Whenever I see one of his spaces open, I park in his space. And he does stuff to my car. That's how this whole thing started. Like the first time I saw the space open, I park in the space. I come back, there's a hard boiled egg stuffed in the exhaust. I'm like, put on this one. Okay, okay. So wait, wait till it gets a little uh, warm. He cracks the windows in one of his car. I filled up his car. I had a Big bag of glitter, I filled it up with glitter. <laughs> and I know he cleaned it out because he had sprinkles on his face for like a week. You know, he looked like a, he looked like a stripper, but he didn't smell like Yankee vanilla candles. You know? <laughs> so, a little time goes by, a little time goes by. I see the space open, I park in the space, right? I come back the next day, the gas flap is open, the cap is missing. There's an empty bag of Domino sugar 
duct tape to the, to the top of the car. I'm like, he put sugar in my gas tank. So I roll, put in neutral, I'll roll to the gas station, have the guys look at it. They're like, no, there doesn't seem to be any sugar residue, but uh, it seems like somebody's trying to send you a message. <laughs> oh, was it Sicily in 1821? So I'm like, okay, all right. So I wait till it gets cold. I take his cones, I get them wet on the bottom, I stick them on the top of each car, and they freeze like sirens, like sirens. And I, I drive by when he's trying to break one off, I'm like, whoop, whoop, and then I drive off, right? And I drive off. <laughs> so a little time goes by, a little time goes by. Alternate side parking. You know, we gotta move the cars from one side to the other. It's suspended for a week. So I see the space open, I park in there, I leave it for a week out of spite. Right, I take the train out of spite. It's beautiful, right? I come back at the end of the week, there are eight slices of bologna on the hood of my car that have been sitting there. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but here's the thing about bologna, this is how bad it is for your digestive system. If you leave it on the hood of a car for more than three and a half days, it adheres to the paint. So when you pull it off, it takes a big circle of paint with it. So I have this polka dot hood, <laughs> permanently polka dotted hood, and this guy's yelling stuff out the window, these old World War II insults, you know, send the salami to your boy in the army. Like, hey, you know. <laughs> and my wife's like, let it go, let it go, whatever. So then like another week, I, I said, I park in this space or whatever, I come back, the windshield's cracked, I got four flat tires, he's keyed the car, he's broken off the antenna. And I'm about to lose my, my mind, and my wife's like, just let it go, let it go. This guy's crazy, you're out of your league, right? You know, but in my heart, I want revenge. <laughs> but I'll let it go. Well, uh, about a month ago, the dude dies, and I had nothing to do with it. I mean, I wasn't there. They just, you know, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm sorry, because I'm not, but, um, <laughs> but still, it's a human life. You gotta do the right thing. I, I see his wife a couple weeks ago, so I like, oh, let me just wanna extend my condolences about Anthony's uh, untimely demise. Uh, hopefully, He's in a better place, you know, with more abundant parking. And, uh, and we had a moment together. We had a moment. She gets all teary-eyed. She's like, you know, you're the only one that said anything in the whole neighborhood. You're the only one that said anything. She goes, a lot of people didn't notice. Anthony, Anthony was very sick for the last five years. That is why he acted the way he did. And she goes, really, there was only one thing that kept him going. I'm like, well, what was that? She's like, he hated you. <laughs> We got all kinds of stuff in our neighborhood. We got a fortune teller. You ever go to a fortune teller? I'm like, I gotta try it. This lady was predicting the most unamazing stuff. She had a crystal ball. Yeah. She's like, I see in your future, tall, dark man with big forehead. I'm like, that's my reflection. <laughs> Silence, do not mock the power. I see you're a Cambodian, no. Canadian, no, custodian, yes, you know, I'm a comedian. You got spell check on this ball? Do you, do you see refund? <laughs> Went out, I did a show in Amsterdam, that was cool. I met a guy that lived in a windmill. I was like, how do you bring girls home to a windmill? It's like, you have to be very careful, you have to time it. <laughs> I did a show in Jamaica, I got stopped at customs. The lady's going through my stuff, you know, are you bringing any drugs into Jamaica? I was like, drugs into Jamaica? <laughs> it's like bringing Slim Fast to Ethiopia. <laughs> All the Ethiopians here tonight are gonna get offended. <laughs> you know, I try not to, you know, like, uh, my friends say, you know, people are getting very sensitive now. Everybody got so sensitive. I don't know when this stuff happened. You know, like I, I had a friend who used to be my friend. Uh, <laughs> he came over the other day, he's, he's like, I'm hungry. I'm like, okay, so I, fix, I fixed him a sandwich. And he's like, well, I can't eat that. And I said, well, why not? And he's like, well, because I have a gluten allergy. I'm like, well, what are the symptoms? He's like, well, you feel full and tired. I'm like, that's what's supposed to happen after you eat bread. You're not supposed to be famished and alert. <laughs> you know? I'm Big C. Benny, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here. Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now.